Yan Ning. I am the CEO of Hohai English. Costa, CEO of Peachy Jobfairs. I'm here today with an entrepreneur. We are filming out of Beijing, China. We were nicely invited to travel, get to see this beautiful country, and also meet a successful entrepreneur. <laughs> a real success story for all of the all of those that are looking into becoming entrepreneurs. Those of you that have businesses and are struggling to succeed. Sometimes we feel like we want to give up, and I think today we have an example of persistence, determination, and a strong foundation. There's always a question that entrepreneurs ask me, and it is, are entrepreneurs born or are they made? I think I know the answer, but with your experience, I'm hoping that <laughs> entrepreneurs out there will get to get their own answers. So the concept of nature versus nurture is pretty interesting in the world of entrepreneurs. Yang Ning, CEO yes. of Ho Hai English. Thank you for inviting us to China. Thank you for coming here. It's a beautiful country. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't too excited about the flight, but once I arrived, even last night, it was, it was dark. It's truly a magnificent country. Yeah. Um, service is outstanding. I thank think so. Thank you for inviting <laughs> us. Um, today we're at um, Ho Hai English, um, the newest, one of the newest um, yeah. uh, schools. Yeah, K-12 school. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start with your background. Yeah. So, in my experience as an entrepreneur, I had to go through poverty. Mm. I had to see my mother mm. suffer mm. in order for me to have that determination. Yeah. My first business venture was at age nine. Mm. And I think without that foundation, I would have never been able to succeed, to fail, to get up and mm. succeed again. Yeah. What's your foundation? So uh, it's, it's a long story. I want to make it short. <laughs> Tell us the story. Yeah. My mom was sent to the rural area in the northwest of China in 1960, late 1960s, by the Chinese government. Okay. And she was from Beijing, so she was supposed to learn from farmers. So she arrived in that rural area. There's no, there was no electricity, no running water, nothing. It's totally poor place. So my mom had to, when she was like, it was, she was 17 years old. Oh. So she had to survive in that area. So I think, so she cried for several months at the very beginning, but then she became very happy. So this is our like family's personality. Uh, I know you shared with me that at one point you lived in a cave? Yes. So my mom then became a teacher in that countryside, and she ran into my dad in a, a local normal university. Mm -hmm. And they fell in love, I, then I came out, and I stayed in the cave for 14 years. So in those 14 years, it was totally like countryside. It's very poor. Sometimes we walked by bare food. So in 1992, because of Chinese policy changed. So they, that kind of people like my mom, they could come back to the big city. Okay. So then we moved back to Beijing when I was 14 years old. So that was 1992. So you're a child and mm. you're experiencing all this poverty. And yeah. You see your mother struggle, your father struggle. You don't have shoes. Yeah. What would she tell you when she hugged you, when she motivated you? Yeah, this is very interesting thing. So when I looked back, I always think about, you know, what my dad, what kind of influence mm -hmm. they posed on me. I always remember, you know, like my dad and my mom, they had a very good relationship. So every night, my dad and my mom, they had a small chat and then they went to uh, sleep. So for me, they, I don't remember they had a baker or quarrel about something. Really? They also had, they always had kind of like a very pleasant talk. So my, so I think this is very important for me, you know, I, I realized, you know, like whatever about the, whatever I encountered in the outside world and there's somewhere, some place I can count on in is my, is my dad and my mom. 
and they never criticized about anything what I did. Even I made some mistakes, because my dad is a basketball coach. Okay. So is he used sometimes he used he curse he curse <laughs> he used a strong word to motivate me. So even right now, for example, very easy. For example, even right now I'm forty two years old, and、uh, when he saw me, he said, "Do you run every day? Do you get up early every day?" I said, "Yes, Dad. I'm doing that right now." So the respect is still there for you. I think so. I think so.、Um, I understand that your mother would tell you there was a bigger world on, on the other side. So I think I think because because my mom was from Beijing, so so Tiananmen Square, Forbidden City, this kind of thing was in her childhood、right. memory. So when she moved to like the countryside in my hometown, and she became a teacher, so she always told her students. There's a much bigger world beyond the mountains, cause my hometown is kind of mountainous、right. area. So I still, yeah, yeah. This is something my mom always told us, and luckily, cause my grandparents they are they are in, they were in Beijing,、mm -hmm. so I could come to Beijing every several years. So it was my first time to see the train, to see the big buildings at that time. Right. So I think that kind of thing impressed me a lot. So then you transition and you become a teacher at age twenty. Twenty three years old. Why teaching? Uh, I think I think in China because because you know like when I was young, my I always see students came to my apartment, came to my home cave With, to visit、family. my parents.、Mm -hmm. So no matter how rich they are, no matter what kind of person, important person they are, they show their respect to my parents. So when they left, I always had a conversation with my dad and my mom. I say, who are they? Why they come here? And my dad explained, they were my students. So I can see the proud. From my dad's face、mm -hmm. and my mom's face, so I feel like I wanna I wanna get people's respect. That's the original reason. So in the United States, yeah,、uh, unfortunately, being a teacher is not as respected. <laughs> and I know you and I had a conversation, and you said, here in China, yes, it's a very respected career. Yes. So this is something very special. So being a teacher is a very special. In you know, like occupation,、mm -hmm. so in China you can see very interesting thing. You know, many celebrities. I had many you know, like famous people who, who are like TV hosts, like who are movie stars in China. They always call themselves after the family name a teacher, <laughs> because they want. To, I think if if you put like teacher into their、uh, like a、uh, name or title, it's kind of like very respectful thing. That's so, interesting. So being a teacher is very special. So sometimes you, for example. Even what we couldn't for for my parents when when we were young, it's hard to buy the for example train tickets、mm -hmm. to go back and come to the big cities. Sometimes they just went to the tickets office. We're teachers, so they can get it. So it's interesting. I remember the、that. beauty of this country. <laughs> <Yeah> . I wish that was the case back in the U.S. Unfortunately,、um, you know, it's not a career that it it's still respected. Yeah. In my opinion, is one of the most.、Uh, I think important careers because as teachers, they build the foundation of adults. Couldn't agree more. Yes. So then, in your forties, around your forties, yeah, you decide one day you just wake up and say, "I'm I'm going to be an, an entrepreneur," or some, there's a story behind that.、Uh, so actually, you know, like I started my first company actually when I was like twenty four years old, twenty three or four years old. Okay. Cause it, you know, like I, I think I had some like a business thing in my mind. You know, like I was very special, what even when I was in university. So I always, you, know, I still remember. You know, like my teacher taught me back in university. You know, like you accept nothing, question everything.、Mm -hmm. So they taught、uh, me and us how to to become like a critical thinking person.、Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't think I want to have like ordinary life like others. So actually, I started my very first company when I was twenty three years old. Okay. And after nearly ten years, in two thousand and twelve, I became a much bigger. I became a CEO in my former company.